Hello everyone. Today we're going to be covering an introduction into Photoshop in 3D. Photoshop has now added some new elements into our workflow that allow us to import 3D objects into Photoshop, add some minor, minor ma manipulations, and through there integrate 3D objects and materials into our designs. So this first video is going to be about making our first set of Photoshop objects using presets that are given to us. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and click on new, get my new dialog box, and I'm going to make it about 1600 by 800 or let's just go up to a thousand pixels. Keep our 300 pixels per inch, that's about fine, and press OK. So in our new documents, what we need to do in order to create a 3D object is first create a new layer for the 3D object to live in. So right now I'm going to click on my new layer icon to make a new layer, and then I'm going to go to 3D, New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, and we're going to start off with a simple sphere. And there we go. Here's our sphere. And because we have our Move tool selected, we also have information on our environment, we have our planes, we have our Z axis represented in blue, our X axis represented in red. If we go into our 3D panel, and there, go to 3D, go ahead and close some of these up. You'll see that we get a 3D panel over here, and it's showing us a lot of information because when we work in 3D we don't actually um, have just a 3D object we have the first and foremost an environment and environment is going to be where our 3D object lives or our 3D objects we could have more than one and all those objects live inside of a scene in our 3D environment in our scene we can see things like the lines which make up our polygons also things like points and also surfaces below that we have our current view which is where our camera sits since we're looking at something in 3D the camera is going to be our 2D representation of this 3D world so we can have our objects sitting anywhere, being rotated in any direction, but as long as we're using our camera to define what our 3D space looks like, then that is going to help us stay oriented in this world. Underneath that, we have our sphere object. And our sphere object if we go into our properties panel above and click on this coordinates icon, we can see our pixel information, where it rests on the X, Y, and Z axis, where it is rotating, and where it is uh, the scale of the object. And you see these represented by the Y here, the X here, and the Z, sorry, blue and the X in red. So let's go ahead and rotate our view so that we can have a better look at some of these handles and how we can use them to manipulate the object. So I'll click on current view and up in the control panel on top I have these 3D mode areas. So here I can go and use this to now rotate around the space. Remember we're just moving around the camera, we're not moving our object and I'm going to make it right about here. That looks pretty good. So that's our rotate tool for our camera. We also have a panning tool, which works like a hands tool in Photoshop. 
And then we also have this dolly tool, which allows us to go in and out like a zoom to our object. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there. Go back to click on my sphere so we can see our handles again. And so when we're looking at this, you see our sphere here. This center square or cube is the scale command. I can use it to drag up or down in order to change the scale of my object. Like so. Press undo. And, or also, I want, can use this to change the size of my handles. So if I hold on the shift key, and I drag this up now, you'll see I change the size of the handles so that I can view it better or change the view as I need to. Everybody works a little bit different in Photoshop. So right here we have the cone, we have this rotating object or widget you saw it has a little arc and then we just have a smaller cube here for the scaling and this allows you to make transformations only in that area of 3d space in this case we have the y in green again the x in red and the blue in the z so i can go ahead and take this and move it up only on the y-axis I can also rotate it only on the y-axis and I could also scale it only on the y-axis and as you see when I scale only on the y I get more of a donut shape so I'm going to undo that a couple times so scaling with this object and moving with this object is pretty simple as long as you make sure you have it selected Another object that we have on here, underneath the sphere, is our infinite light. So infinite light, you need to think about it like a sun. The sun is too far away to be moved in terms of how close it is to our object. So what we can do is adjust the intensity of the sun, right here, using this intensity slider. We also have the ability to add or remove a shadow. If we wanted something to appear like there was no bottom underneath, we could just remove the shadow. And we could also increase the softness of that shadow. And as you can see over here, in this area, the softness has been increased. And then we also have these different presets for different types of lighting conditions. So we have here a custom. We could change them to a couple different things. So if I want to say daylights, there's some daylights. See, it creates three different infinite lights. We also have something interesting like fire. Some night lights. And something called purple phase. We go back to the default lights here and I'm going to increase the softness a little bit about 15 percent and then with my move tool move my light over so that I can sit nicely okay so let's go ahead and add another object but the first thing I want to do is I'm going to reset where the object is placed right now because I like the placement but I want to add another object and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to select my sphere, go back to my coordinates and just click on this and make sure it goes to zero. And you see it places it on the zero axes of all three axes. Okay, This is going to be good for us as we're creating objects and modeling objects and then when we're done with that we can move them around in space as we need to. So I'm going to then take my camera and then just pan it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is click on my scene. I'm going to say add object, add meet from this preset, and I'm going to add a ring. We're going to make a globe. 
And you see here it says, how big do you want this object to be? Well, if I remember what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at a sphere that's only about 42 pixels wide. So it'd be smarter to take this down a lot more. So I can go ahead and just drag this down do like this, or I could just go ahead and type in here. I would want this to be no more than about maybe 75 pixels and we'll press OK. And once I do that, you'll see that something weird happens. I have now this weird thing going on on my sphere with my new ring living here. It's about this big. It's also inside of my sphere. So this is a glitch that Photoshop has because it's not really that powerful with working with 3D, but let's be able to work around that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. Or I'm just going to undo, excuse me. And instead of adding a more complicated object like a sphere, I'm going to add using a right click on my scene now, as opposed to the right hand drop down menu, add a cylinder. Again, it's going to ask me how big do I want the cylinder. I'm just going to say the accept the defaults. Pixels. Press OK. And now you see what is happening is I'm actually inside of this cylinder. If I zoom out a little bit, you really can't tell, but this, this cylinder is huge. So let's first make it a lot smaller. I'm going to take my current view and zoom out. Right, select my current view and zoom out there. There's my cylinder. Grab this cylinder now, take that Y, take it down to maybe about 500. Take that 500 down to zero. And looks like it needs to go a lot smaller. So luckily we could use a scale uniform tool to take down the side of this cylinder. And it's gonna be a little bit bigger than that sphere. I'm just gonna move it a little bit on the x-axis. And now let's bring in another object again. And let's try that ring one more time. Add my ring, take the pixels, I'll try and take it down to about 200. Press OK. And it looks like, again, we're inside of that ring. So the reason for that, again, is because Photoshop does a weird job of grabbing and creating objects, especially when it comes to how big an object should be. So it's OK. We can always just work with it if we go ahead and center everything on the X, Y, and Z. And we could also just use this button right here. And there we go, we're centering our ring. And now let's just take it down in size. So I'm gonna take it down to about 100 pixels here. And it looks like I need to do something to the scaling here. So I'm gonna undo that once. And inside of this scale option, I can click on it and hit uniform scaling so that way everything stays within the same proportion. We go ahead, check on that. Put back down to 100 again. And there we go, that's a lot better. Press enter to accept that. And now you see the ring and the globe are there in a nicer way. I can get rid of this cylinder now. If I click on cylinder, go ahead into my icon here, delete that, and it's gone. And then here's my new ring scene. Again, if I open this folder, it's inside of this weird object here. We don't really need that. So we can always just click on this, do a right click, and go down to ungroup objects. So now we have our sphere and our ring together and we can grab both at the same time and make any adjustments we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in a little bit. Just again now using my little heads up display. And what I want to do is I want to grab this first and rotate that ring on its x-axis. Do something like that. So I want to make sure I get it right on 90. Go over to my properties panel. Make sure I hit that negative 90. Press OK. 
And now I'm going to make that ring smaller. I actually want it to sit uh, just above that uh, that globe there. So I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller on the X. And you see I have to do a lot of drags over here. That's okay if I drag and hold down shift. It'll go by a lot faster. But you just got to remember what you're doing there. And then let me go ahead and zoom in all the way in again. And I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. My Z. There it is. There's my Z. I'm going to make that nice and thin. I'm making a nice little globe here. So I'm going to zoom in again on my object, my view. And take my uniform scaling back on. And now make this just a little bit smaller. Make sure it fits on nicely. And so with these two objects together, and I can make sure I can grab it now. I'm gonna grab this and it looks pretty good. This is looking pretty good. Now let's give it a nice little tilt. So I'll grab both these objects and I think I wanna rotate it on the x-axis again, something like that. I think something like this. All right, it's looking pretty good. Just go ahead and clean that up here. It's okay. And because it's looking a little lonely out here, let's go ahead and add a color for this background. Just gonna go ahead and double click on my foreground color, choose something I might wanna use. Something like a nice green would work for me today. And just use the Alt our option and delete to fill that in. And now I'm gonna go and adjust my light because I want this to be just with the shadow inside of the frame. So I'm gonna click on my 3D layer again. I have two infinite lights now. I'm gonna make sure I just keep that at one by deleting the, the second one using the trash I can icon. And choosing my infinite light one more time. And moving it around. Looks like it's right about there. And I'm just going to remove the shadow because we don't want that right now. So here we are. Press M to take a look at this. So far, so good. I think I'm going to go ahead and just move it to the center a little bit more. Just using my hand tool and selecting my current view in order to do that. And I'm also going to change the color of this object. So right now it's looking a little bit dull and I want to make this a little bit more shinier, a little bit more brilliant. So I'm going to go into my environment and take a look at some of the objects I can adjust. Right now we have a black global ambient which is why it's getting so dark. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this thing called the IBL which is called image based light. Click on that and you'll see it gives us our default. And if we want to see what that is, we can actually go into, into it, clicking on this icon, and go to Edit Texture. So what image-based light is a image-based way of setting up multiple light sources. Think of it as studio lighting, where you have multiple lights, all coming from different angles, and all having different objectives in terms of what they're trying to light. And this is supposed to set up our initial environment. Now we could always set up spotlights later on, but this is something that is much more subtle and really helps with the overall rendering process. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more light to this, simply by using my selection tool and making a copy, a key selection around here. And then using the option click, sorry, my move tool to then copy this one, two, and then one, two, and three times. Please select that, save it, and then close it. And now I have a little bit more going on. And I, because I want to still make it even brighter than that, more brilliant, I'm going to go back into my edit texture one more time. And I'm just going to do a simple adjustment with my layers, my levels, excuse me, Command L. Let's take my levels and right about there. 
not quite black. So okay, save, close. And now we have our level, our environment set up and we have a little bit of a shadow here. Everything is looking pretty good. And now I'm gonna press into my scene. And now you can see there's a lot more light going on here. So let's go ahead and add some color to these two objects. So what I'm gonna do first is select on uh, my sphere and I'm gonna go and press my marquee tool so I, can, I don't need to see all this level, this plain information. But I can still make adjustments. So my first object is my sphere. I'm gonna open that up and just select the sphere material. Go into my diffuse and since it is a default property, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it for now. So that way, if I go to diffuse, click on it, and let's say since I wanna make a globe, I wanna go ahead and choose something like a nice blue. Very brilliant, you can see a real live rendering op option right there. I'll press okay. And I'm gonna leave this relatively dark or relatively blunt. And then I'm gonna go into my ring object, select my ring material, again, choose this. Remove texture, and I'm going to make this really warm. Press OK, and look at that. My shine is up 100%. My reflection, I'm going to take that even higher. And for now, that's going to be fine for me. And there we have it. We have our first two objects both with different types of lighting and also different colors. So what we're gonna do after this is learn how to make it work inside of a 3D space.